900 miles around the coast of uh, Nicaragua and then Honduras, which is pretty uh, active pirate territory. But yeah, I think tonight will be the first night where we have to actually worry about the pirates. The big ship had all its lights on, but now I've just turned around and it's turned all its lights off. It's a bit tricky at the moment, guys. Um, I'll let you know how it all ends up. Hurricane Irma boats tossed. Here we are at this marina. Hi, my name's Colin. I used to be a chief engineer on super yachts, but gave it all up to buy a hurricane damaged Lagoon 450. My friends and I are fixing it up as we go and are determined to circumnavigate the entire planet. So subscribe if you want some inspiration to live life to the fullest. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So what are you waiting for? So there's two things that drive me crazy with this boat. One is when the one is when the waves. Oh shit! Just took a wave straight over the bow. One is when the waves crash straight into the bottom of the boat. Breach slam. That's happening every second wave right now. Hear that? And again, and again, it just slams the, the bottom of the boat between the hulls and just shakes the entire boat. And I just hate thinking about what that's doing to the actual structure of the boat. And the other one is when the boom slams, so when these big waves hit us from the side, rolls us, the boom comes to the center and then slams out. So we'll put a preventer on it which is helping a little bit, but it's still kind of slamming. It's just really hard to take. Trust me, it's a lot worse out here than it looks on camera. Just doing my, uh, my night watch. This is the worst part of the trip in terms of pirates. It's where a lot of the attacks have happened. There's a whole bunch of keys in their area which um, Hondurans fish off. And I don't think they're pirates so much as just opportunists. I think um, they're just fishermen out here doing their thing. And they just see an opportunity to make a couple of bucks. I got the dogs here protecting me. We've got no nav lights on. So we're just cruising in the dark. We've got a half moon and it's actually super bright. So we've got good visibility. So I'm fairly confident that if there was another sailboat out here, we'd see them. Um, so that's not a problem. So we've got about uh, 390 miles to go. Well, we've made some really good ground over the last day. We were averaging about eight and a half knots. Max speed was 13 knots. Uh, but we had a two knot current with us. I bet the fishing here is amazing, but we don't fish at night on this boat. I don't want anyone uh, falling off the back, so. When the sun comes up, 6 a.m., I'm sure we'll have a couple rods out. We'll see if we can catch a fish. We've only caught one, two fish a little bit disappointing, but what can you do? All right, I'm out. On this exact evening, a boat was sailing to the south of us as we were sailing north. They were attacked by 20 pirates and four fishing boats who surrounded their sailboat. The couple locked themselves inside the boat, which luckily for them had metal grates over the hatches so the pirates could not get in. They proceeded to destroy or steal absolutely everything, including their sails, chart plotter, dinghy, diving equipment, everything. The men were armed only with knives, but the captain reported that there was no doubt in his mind that his life would have been at risk if the pirates were able to enter the boat. Once they finally left, the sailboat limped down to Providencia, a Colombian island off the coast of Nicaragua. All the while, Parley was none the wiser. I think we'll put the spinnaker up, but I've never put the spinnaker up in 20 knots before. So, um, 
think we're going to try it out anyway. It's about 12 knots apparent. So, um, as we put it up, I might motor a little bit forward as well just to take a bit of that apparent wind out of it as well. And then we can go dead downwind and with the with the seas, which would be a lot more comfortable. doing about seven and a half knots and it's just such a more comfortable ride than having the main up and everything like that the mains the sea's really choppy and the main is just slamming all the time so with the spinner graph it's just a smooth pulling motion we're gonna bring it down before it gets dark tonight in the home stretch pretty exciting So we've lost the spinnaker unfortunately, it's torn all the way down, so I don't even know if it's worth repairing. You see there's a really good sail maker here in Rio Dulce where we're about to go, but yeah, maybe we were pushing it a little bit too hard, maybe, maybe 18 knots of true wind is too much for a spinnaker, I don't know, another lesson learned. After blowing out the spinnaker, the boys decided to let off a bit of steam by throwing the rugby ball around until... So we decided to use it as a man overboard drill, which I've done many times in power boats, but found out just how difficult it was when sailing under full sails, which were wing on wing. The most important person in a man overboard situation is the spotter, who must never take his eyes off the person, especially in these choppy conditions. As we came around, the 22 knots of true wind hit us directly head on, and I decided to dump the mainsail and motor sail with just the headsail to try and make things a little easier. As I approached and turned up into the wind, the headsail started flogging like crazy, as it does, then I got blown away from the man overboard. Jamie jumped in to retrieve the ball, but it was a seriously eye-opening experience should this ever happen in real life. To manoeuvre the cat so quickly to come around and head back down your course while trying to keep eyes on someone's head bobbing up and down in the swell is no easy task and I hope to never have to do this for real in these conditions. So it's our sixth morning at sea. Last night was by far the worst night that we've had since we left. We had 30 knot winds, so we took the whole main down. It was so uncomfortable, so we took the whole main down. To sailed on half a, half a head, so we're still doing seven knots. We got six to eight foot seas right on our beam. So I pretty much haven't slept all night. It's been super uncomfortable. Shit's flying all over the place. Had pots and pans like jump out of my little storage places. Bottles flying everywhere. We'll try to get through this day. We'll try to smash out some miles so that we can get get there tomorrow morning. But yeah, it's not all fun and games out here. For the rest of that day and all through the night, the conditions remained extremely uncomfortable. Being stuck on a boat in the middle of the ocean in these conditions can be very disheartening and you just hope that it stops sooner or later. But it is important to try to stay as positive as possible and know that it will not last forever. And that's exactly what happened. As soon as we found protection behind Roatan, 
the seas flattened off and we were greeted by some friendly dolphins. It seemed we were not going to make it to the anchorage without one last pirate scare, spotted by a nervous Sean. What do you reckon? Pirates? Are they coming at us? There we go. Stand at the front and scare them off. Coming at us. It turned out to be a false alarm, and you could have possibly put our paranoia down to the lack of sleep we had endured over the last three days. But we had finally arrived safe and sound, and although completely exhausted, could not have been happier. Hi guys, hope you enjoyed that episode. Um, in part one last week, you guys left some really interesting comments about piracy and stuff. Um, it opened up a really good discussion and I just wanted to address one thing. Um, some people were saying that we were kind of crazy for, for going where we went. Um, a friend of mine, Eric, he's, um, he used to work for NASA, he's a super smart guy. He plotted all of the pirate attacks um, around Honduras and every single one of them was in, inside 100 miles. So when we went around Honduras, we went 120 miles off and that's probably why we didn't see anything. Uh, the boat that you just saw in this episode, they were 35 miles off. So their chances of getting attacked were a lot higher than ours. Um, so I think it's more about just minimizing the risk and uh, making an educated decision about what you want to do. And our decision was to go 120 miles off. We felt pretty safe. Um, you're not completely safe, but it just does reduce that risk. So that's what we did there. Um, the other thing is guns. Uh, we don't carry guns on board Parlay. The logistics of having a gun, because we bounce around to so many different countries, the logistics of clearing a gun in and out of all these different countries we go to, um, it's just kind of a bit of a nightmare and, and um, you have to declare them and then they often confiscate them and they'll keep them at the port of entry where you just entered. And often in these bigger countries, you don't actually want to go all the way back to the port where you cleared in to clear out. So. It's a bit of an inconvenience. Then there's the, you could go the direction of just not declaring them and then hiding them, but if you get caught doing that, the punishments, depending on where you are, are really severe. So that's why we don't have a gun on board. Um, but I wouldn't mind hearing from someone who does cruise with a gun and just tell me, maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, we don't carry one on Parlay. I'm not against it, I just haven't done enough research on it to really make that educated decision yet. So. Um, maybe there's going to be some nice, uh, interesting comments this this, uh, this week. But um, hope you enjoy that, guys. Hit subscribe and like the video if you want to help us out. And we'll see you next episode. Cheers, guys. At the moment, I feel full of life, bro. I feel full of life. There's nothing. Yeah. There's nowhere I want to be other than right here, right now.